How about that 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 Rance Allen that you played yesterday? Uh okay. Something about the name Jesus. Right. <laughs> All right, TJ, what I want to do, I'm going to ask you just to um, break down um, that song for us. Um, teach you guys the, the voice in there and the chorus, some of those runs that I heard you doing. Okay. All right. Um, and yes, the, you, I, seen, you... uh, I seen somebody ask the question. I was in the, uh, was in the key of C. I was in the key of C. Yeah. Um, can, you, can you come... Can you, what do you say, Chris? I'm not seeing the, the fretboard. Oh, the fretboard? Okay. No, yeah. Let's see if I can position it right. Right. So um, can you break down the, the, the song now? So the um, key of the song is in uh, C major. So C major chord. So basically, I started off with uh, just picking the song. same voices and then for me all I did was once I once I got control of the melody I just flowed all the way throughout the song and um just basically add different chords and uh different chords and voices all the way throughout as long as you still stay on top of the melody because what I was taught just stay on, as long as you stay within the melody range you you can really just flow freely as long as you're still on top and you can come back right back with everybody else right there back to that C major chord which is that yeah. one in terms of numbers, How you yeah, doing? yeah, greetings. Um, so what I would like to know, I have uh, 
um, an acoustic here. Um, I would like to get into, you know, the whole black gospel thing, playing guitar and black gospel itself. Mm-hmm. Um, where would you suggest that I start? Where would I suggest that you start? Is that what you said? Yeah, basically. For me, I um I started off really just uh um especially you know learning the fretboard and learning my chords because. I know for me playing, I because I play bass and lead as well, and the difference between the two is a it's a it's a very a very very big difference. Mm-hmm. So for me, I would say uh, basically just start off learning your uh, learning the fretboard, knowing mm-hmm. where to go with the different strings, and knowing what what strings carry different voices and and, and notes as well. And um, the best way for me um, that I started learning because my dad started me off on uh, quartet, so. That basically helped me kind of, you know, memorize my fretboard as, as, as much as I needed to, because quartet, you you have a uh, range like you can you can flow all the way up and down the fretboard using different strings, because every string is going to be used just about. So that was that was one major thing for me that I did as far as like learning my learning my chords and then learning where that certain particular string can be played, especially when it comes to like um, a solo and part, and you just you know uh, playing the fingering part of the guitar rather than the rhythm part. Mm-hmm. Okay. And one more thing here. Um, could you suggest a, a couple? I'm a lover of quartet music, um, quartet gospel. Um, could you suggest a couple artists to you know, listen to? Oh, yeah. Um, the Soul Seekers, that's um, an old group from a while back. Um, I, I love the way they arrange their music. Um, but the Soul Seekers, uh, Mighty Clouds of Joy, um, Lee Williams. Uh, let's see who else. Um, the Williams Singers. That that's that's a that's a very very good group. Mm-hmm. And um, the Canton Spirituals. Those are probably my um my top favorite ones to listen to. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. All right. Um, TJ, what about your your, your rig, your setup? Um, what are some of the the, the different um, equipment that you use in your in your rig? Okay. Um, for me, uh, as far as my my rig, my guitar, I'm, I'm coming out of um, the Line Six. It's a um, power cab with two twelves in it. Um, it's a one of the newer one of the newer digital amps. One of the newer digital amps that I that I um, that I just came across and been using, and it's 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 really good. It's really really good. But for me, the main my main part of my rig is my board. And I, I use the um, the Boss ME80, and uh, that's it's it's got to be one of my uh, one of my favorite boards, especially once I I went in because uh, I went in and used my MacBook, and I I program my own sounds and I uh, lock some sounds that's uh, that's in there that they don't really give to you outside of the board. You have to kind of go on your computer and get out. So and it, it gave me that that clean sound which everybody uh, was able to hear um, today, and. Um, now I use that for my effects pedal and for um, my guitar. It just varies on uh, the type of gear. Um, I have my, this is the Epiphone, uh, the Big Crack. This, it has the Bigsby right here, the Webby Bar. This is what I'm using today. And then um, the other one that I do have is a, um, a Fender Strap. Okay. Um, so when you travel to different, um, um, I would say countries. Um, do you use the same setup? Um, yes, I, I I tend to use the same setup. It just depends on um, typically how big the venue is, because sometimes I typically wouldn't have to bring my uh, my line six because the amp it, it is kind of big because like I said it do it has two twelves in it, so it, it's a fairly nice size amp. So typically, depending on uh, what type of venue I, I may be going to. I would just carry my uh, my pedal and my uh, my my guitar because really my pedal it does all the voices for me really and I, I I have because um, it has a preamp built into it so I can really take any amp uh, no matter the make or the model and make it sound like what I have sitting right here right now. All right. So as I mentioned earlier, um, getting exposed to more music, um, learning more. So I've been trying to focus a lot concerning, you know, jazz, Latin music, fusion and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But what was your um, 
say approach did you get exposed to say all of these stars what would you, what did you take from these stars if you were exposed to them for me i know um growing up i grew up listening to a lot of gospel but i tell everybody all the time that gospel actually ranges from a variety of uh of different music from like uh jazz like you said um latin and um many other genres too as well and so for me i um i tend to kind of like you know keep my ear you know open and keep it trained because there's a lot of there's a lot of jazz chords that are really helpful for me too as well and um i tend to try to listen to those because jazz is a, a very controlled a very controlled sound that as well as classical too as well um classical for me was uh when i was trying to um take up learning that i did that in school um this about probably a year or two ago uh, I took up music theory and classical music because I kind of want to open my ear to the more classical side of things. And um, that gave me a more controlled uh, control sound too as well. So I would say, you know, keep your ear open, um, listen to different drummers, listen to different styles, and just keep an open open mind and, um, you know, a positive mindset because there's, there's a lot of different, you know, voices out there and different songs that you can find in different genres of music. Thank you. I have a question. Um, kind of a go. I, I, uh, I guess the answer to this, um, TJ. Um, since you have um, perfect pitch, could you, um, and you have passive perfect pitch, how does that work with one's instrument? So for me, I um, with my guitar. With me having passive perfect pitch, I'm not able to like as Daryl said, like with passive perfect pitch, I can hear the chords, but I also I just can't I can't call them out like necessarily just verbalize that chord right off the back. But having my guitar in my hand, when somebody automatically starts singing, I know I can hear the note in my head, and it's like it sends a signal to my brain and my brain to my hand, and I'm I automatically go to that uh to that note, and that happens for me whether I'm on uh, bass. Uh, keys or um, or lead guitar. Okay, so in that process, you you said something about it would send signals to your head um, regarding when you have the instrument. Do do you see any form of colors, or do you see any form of or smell anything? Because I mean, to some people, you know, perfect pitch. Um, I ain't talking about absolute. We ain't talking about um, the absolute right now. We just talking about um, passive because it comes under two cat um, categories: absolute or um, um, absolute or um, I'm sorry, passive. So um, that's what I was asking in that because with absolute, I mean absolute is absolute. You know what he did. We don't know um, form of um, you know assistance of any keyboard knowledge of that sort. Um, yeah. Some people will see colors in absolute pitch, but I'm just asking on the passive side, you know, because I don't have passive, you have passive. So is there some form of, you know, uh, you know, colors or something scientifically? Um, for me, I know of some people that do see colors, but I know I don't see any colors or any type of, you know, activity that goes on that lets me know like, hey, I'm in, the, uh, I hear the kids see or right. anything. And then for me, it's just, you know, like I said, my brain just sending a message to my uh, to my hand and my hand just going right there because I hear it in my head. And okay. it's like, I, I don't have to second guess myself. It just goes right there to it. Okay. That's all for now. <laughs> all right. <that's> all. <laughs> Any other questions? And it might sound strange, but what, does your mood change based on the type of key you're in not necessarily the tonality of the song or the chord but like would you does does it is there some correlation to your mood and playing especially when you know what key um know the key even without playing if that makes sense um for me um i would say like i don't know some certain keys give me especially on my guitar like for me, if I'm playing uh, my lead, if if we in the key of uh, C sharp or um, C or D or E, those are like my two of my two or three of my favorite uh, three of my favorite keys to play in. So I, I would say my mood kind of changes because you know you kind of 
you got to you get a real good feel for that key. And then, like, for me, for uh, bass, I love um, C sharp, um, uh, G, uh, F sharp, um, and just moving, just moving around from uh, on bass and stuff. So I would say, like, my, my mood would change, especially if you're in your favorite key, because I know for, like, some organ players and keyboard players, if you if you're in their favorite key, a key that they like really really love to play in, I I, I would say your mood is is going to greatly change. Okay, cool, cool. I suspect. All right, um, TJ, I'm going to put you on the spot now. No, Michael and Michael was doing his thing on his organ just a while ago. We he, he played up a storm inside the, the Music Hacks network. All right, <laughs> if you were playing with with Michael. All right. What would be some of the things that you would be playing on your instrument? If we're doing some other like shout, I'll demonstrate with your instrument. Yeah. Okay, I can do that. I can do yeah. that. I think um, I think Uncle Mike was in the key of uh, I think he was in uh, B flat anyway. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> Music hacks. <laughs> all right, TJ, can you break down all of that um, craziness that you were playing a while? Yeah, I can break it down. So really, um, the first, the, the first top part. That's basically just um, quartet, just sped up for me. So just a, a, a basic quartet. <laughs> And then going from there, just Can you show us how, how, how you, you, oh, you the know. style of picking that you're using? So right here, can, you, can everybody see this right yeah, here? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. It's basically just a, just a uh, uh, up stroke and a down stroke. Oh. Questions for TJ, guys. TJ, we're gonna take one more song for you, and then um, after a few more questions, and then we will bring in Delroy. Man, you're working up a storm inside this place. <laughs> <laughs> we we have to get all of you guys together in in a jam session. All right. Oh, um, yeah, guys too. Yeah, man. I, I hope you guys can set up that for us. I'm um, probably the next, not this Thursday, but probably the, the other Thursday. Yes, sir. All right. Maybe you guys can set up a whole thing at, at your church or whatever so we can view what happens. Uh, we don't put everything together. All right. Oh, yeah, I, 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 we was talking about that earlier. I, I, we would love to um, get that set up and get that done too as well. Yeah. I wasn't able to catch the first part of the presentation. You were talking about the perfect pitch. Um, me, myself, I'm really 
interested, you know, about the perfect pitch part, you know, in terms of learning it, um, I realized that I'm able to identify some keys, you know, and I was just, you know, for a long time I've been playing in music from a very young age. I just wanted to know that um, is it possible that it can, is it possible that someone can have perfect pitch and really not know? I see the question. Um, I know for uh, for me, um, I didn't realize I had perfect pitch until I moved up here to North Carolina from Alabama. I didn't find out until until I met um, Delroy, and um, mm-hmm. I was playing one day, and um, he went to a key, and we both went at the same time. And uh, basically, he asked me, turned around, he said that I had perfect pitch, and I said, "Well, I asked him what was that," and uh, he explained it to me, and I, I told them, I said, I thought it was something that, like, every musician just had, like, because as a young child, I was, I had always been able just to go to the key without having to second guess myself, as far as, as long as something was, in, um, the instrument was in front of me, what was in my hand, I always just went straight to the key, as soon as I heard it, I was already there, I, without having to, you know, kind of guess and feel around on the keys or run a scale to try to find the key, and, um, but for me, yeah, I, I believe that you, Someone can have her pitch and not realize it. Cause I know for me, I went for years, um, for just about, I guess you say 21 years of my life, not knowing that I had a uh, perfect pitch until, I, like I said, until I met Delroy. Um, I heard you were talking about your setup. Uh, just to be sure, what interface would you advise to, to use with a bass guitar? To use for the, uh, to use for the bass guitar? Yeah. Um, are you saying uh, as far as like a recording interface for like studio work, production, if you was going to do um, any type of tracking or anything like that? Is that the type of interface you're talking about? Yes, yes. And even if you're doing a show or something like that. Um, for me, the interface I would use, especially if like for bass, um, I would use what they call it's the um, the focus right, the scarlet. It's um it's a red interface and uh, they come in uh, form different forms and sizes. But the um, focus right and the scarlet has always been a very very great interface, uh, very widely used interface too, as well uh, throughout the music industry. Um, and that's something typically I would use for my bass. Now for my lead, uh, the Boss M80, my effects pedal. It comes with a um, built-in interface already in it. So anytime I'm having to go uh, to use, go to a studio to uh, use any type of equipment or anything, I don't necessarily have to use um, the interface because my board automatically comes with that. So it's just a just a plug and play, and it's going to re- it'll record automatically as long as I have the um, the software in front of me to do it with. Okay. Thanks. Yes, sir. No problem. Cool. All right. Um, so, TJ, I'm going to ask you just to play um, the final song for us tonight. And okay. Yeah. And then we take Delroy. All right. I'm going to do a little, just a little old, uh, old school quartet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank mm-hmm. you. 
there's one more question in 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 chat. Um, this is from Jerome J Keys. He's asking if you didn't have a pedal board mm -hmm. and you were using only VST from a PC, what would your recommendations be for guitar? For the uh, for the lead guitar or the bass guitar? The, the lead guitar. The lead guitar. Um, if I wasn't using my pedal board, uh, as far as that, I would use the, um, like I said, either the Focusrite uh, uh, interface and go uh, straight into the um, to the recording software. Now, for me, I know I normally would use Logic, especially if I didn't have my pedal board with me when I was recording, because that way, excuse me, you already have the um, built-in amplifiers on Logic. Um, you also have built-in um, effects pedal that you can uh, change up, and you can even build a pedal board uh, through Logic as well. It's like your um, your compressors, your overdrive pedals, uh, your reverb pedals, um, and any other modulation pedals you might need. But all those are um, actually built into that um, that software, and. I know for a fact, like I said, they are built into um, the Logic Pro uh, software because I've used that before and not had to use my pedal board. I wasn't sure um, what was said on the matter of perfect pitch. I heard, I heard what our guest said just now. Um, you know, as his experiences, which is like whoa, phenomenal. You know, living and not knowing that it is perfect pitch. That's quite interesting. But I'm not sure if there was anything said before that may you know give a perspective for musicians who probably have a good ear but you know still looking to learn more on on uh figuring pitch quickly uh recognizing you know different stuff quickly i don't know if there was anything said before that could you know be of good advice um i know for me uh i would say that uh not if you, if one was, you know, if a musician was not knowing that they had perfect pitch or anything, but they was trying, you know, trying to work on it and work on their keys, I would say just, uh, as far as like, just keep working and practicing because uh, you're gonna eventually going to start memorizing stuff, even if uh, you don't really have perfect pitch. I wouldn't say you'd be able to, you know, as far as like what, what there was able to do, call out the notes as soon as it's being played, as soon as you hear it, any type of sound that could have a, a musical note to it, call out that note. I wouldn't say anybody would necessarily do that because I don't think perfect pitch is something that could be taught. But mm -hmm. I believe that if a musician is uh, working at the craft uh, and going through memorizing voices, those those voices are going to uh, eventually, you know, remain steady in the brain, and then you're automatically just going to know, you know, where to go and how to and go to that note because you're going to have that memorized uh, in your head. Uh, totally can relate to what you're saying, man. Thanks. Yes, sir. Awesome. Awesome, guys. TJ, respect, sir. I, 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 I really appreciate and we really appreciate your, your, your humility, as I said, for taking the time out to come and explain some of these things to us. That's all yes, to you, bro. I, I appreciate you having me. And um, I know I had seen some uh, questions being answered about as far as where to find me. I am on uh, Facebook currently too as well. I am, my name is uh, it's under TJ Wright. And I'm also um, on Instagram under uh, T underscore Wright 26. 